uh, on my left, uh, who recently switched with uh, Lonnie, Anne Martin van Kesteren, uh, design curator at the uh, Museum Boymans van Beuningen in Rotterdam. Uh, welcome. Um, you are here to introduce some of the work of the uh, winners of the 2018 uh, New Material Award, uh, Studio Clarenbeek and Dros, together with Atelier Luma. Um, that project has really uh, come to a next level. Um, what, maybe, you, maybe you could just introduce the project. How did you come to the work of uh, Studio Clarenbeek and Dross? Yes, well, um, we have been working with them for a long time already. So I think I've been working in the museum already since 2012 with them. And so I've been seeing the different steps that they've been making. Why we are working at this moment with them, um, we're doing a research project with them, because we, we see them very much as change makers. They're not only thinking about a new material or a new aesthetic or a new uh, design for or a better design. They try to really sort of um, yeah, turn upside down the whole production system. And um, they have developed uh, algae glass with us in the museum. It's a process that they started developing with Luma. And you see some images here on, uh, on the screen behind you. Um, and the beauty of this material is that it has hardly any CO2, C CO2 uh, uh, emission. It actually has a negative footprint in that it cleans only the dirty air and it gives back uh, oxygen. The other uh, process or uh, waste stream from this process of algae glass is just pure water. And another waste stream is a biostimulant which you can use in the lampa, in the agricultural system. Mm -hmm. And that avoids us of using all these chemicals. So no chemicals, no CO2 production, and they take out uh, the complete uh, logistics of the, of the industrial process. Because you can grow these materials on the spot where you also are using them and where you are fabricating them. So it's quite, quite mind-blowing as a material. And the, the basis of the material is algae and wheat. Um, so we worked with them three years ago in, in creating a glass object from our collection from the, from the museum. And it was amazing. It's a 3D print. But we were intrigued by, by the way of thinking and also the way how they work, because they do everything in their studio. They don't only make the objects, they also produce the materials and develop the chain of production. So on a small scale. But we, we were talking and we said, if you really want to make a change with this material and this new, uh, new idea uh, and improve the world, then you need to scale it up. And this product that you see here now is actually the latest version of their uh, research development. This is a, a wheat material, not an algae, but a wheat. And it's a replica of one of the products that we have in our collection. And this product can actually be um, uh, mold pressed. So uh, it can be uh, produced in a high speed uh, process so you can yeah, um, produce hundreds of these objects in uh, hardly any time and that's quite an interesting step because none of the design projects that I've seen so far is actually taking the development so far so these are mm. mavericks mm. I think super yeah really March nice. and Eric um, uh, I was also curious uh, on your position as a museum curator taking such a strong uh, strong position together with designers I was just wondering why you are doing that well um, we see that uh, when, we make, when we make shows in the museums and exhibitions that the imagination is not only targeting or ins inspiring the people that are c coming to our, to our uh, program, but it's also inspiring companies. So, uh, especially when you make design exhibitions, afterwards I get a lot of requests of companies to say, okay, uh, this is such an amazing idea, of this such an energy, and we are really into sort of an, um, yeah, a catch-22 system or position. Uh, couldn't we work together? So with this, with this project of the wheat uh, uh, glass, we are actually trying to sort of implement it into the environment of the Rotterdam community. 
um, because there's another clever thing about them. Yeah. That's the live feed yeah. that you see now. Can yeah. you see that? Uh, I think we see it. Yeah, because it's yeah. not behind you, but I see it there. We got it. Yeah, okay, it's there. Because apart from not using chemicals, from not uh, making CO2, CO2 emissions, sorry, another thing is that uh, a major issue in our environment is, of course, the oceans and the pollution of the oceans. So if we are making mass consumer products, we should also think about how to dismantle these products. So we are working on this project, which is called, this research project, which is called the Afbreak Economy. And very, very important in this way of thinking, and it's a little bit what you already put onto the table, is that if you design something, you also need to design it for uh, disassembly. And the wheat uh, material that they are now developing, we are testing how quickly this can be uh, wow. marine degrade mm. how do you say that in English Degradable. marine de de yeah, exactly. the marine degradability yeah. and this is a project which is live in their studio now yeah. and it's only four days that it's been in a container of water and it's all it's the same object that you saw before eh? the little cup and it's uh, already starting to become earth again because it's a clean process you see some of the snails which are eating the material and it's uh, dust to dust it brings back wow the yeah. sea and the O2 back to the place yeah. where it belongs, back to Earth, without uh, yeah. uh, dirty things. Yes, exactly. And I think from so from I think we started at the at the sea, um, and we've gone through the global float lines uh, through transparent bricks, and now we're uh, back at the sea somehow with the seaweed. Um, so we've kind of come full circle on this panel, I'm afraid. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Inge Oskam, uh, Loni van Rieswijk, uh, Christoph Tichman and Lisa Bernato, uh, Oscar Verheyen, uh, Fajr and Teleslia, thank you again, and Anna-Martin van Kesteren. Um, thank you also for watching the Dutch Design Week talks on sustainable products. Uh, if, you want to dig, dive into, if you want to dive into the sustainable products further, uh, please follow the sustainable products tour on the Dutch Design Week website. Uh, I would also like to thank the New Material Award, the Dutch Design Week TV team and L Decoration. Uh, and this was the very last Design Week talk. Uh, thank you all for watching and see you next year. Thanks so much. <laughs>